everybody, my name is Savannah and today we're going to talk about the new tropical pack coming to Planet Zoo tomorrow on April 4th. Thank you so much to Frontier for giving me early access so I could get in and take a look at the wonderful animals and all of the scenery pieces that are being added. And I'm sure you can see them and also hear them already, but the Lar Gibbons are going to be the first animal that we're going to take a look at. I have everybody else set up in little pens. And then down there is all the scenery. So let's just go ahead and get started. Taking a look at our Lar Gibbons first and also hearing them because they are quite noisy. There are so many different colors of Gibbons that they added. I think I counted nine in total that I found. Now I did a little bit more research and I was told in one of my videos that these guys had sexual dimorphism, meaning that, you know, the females were blonde and the males were black or something like that. But that actually does not apply to the Lar Gibbon. That is the white-faced Gibbon, I think it is. And to my understanding, the two are confused quite often. So these guys don't have differences between male and female. Any of them can be black, any of them can be brown, any of them can be blonde or white. So for the fur colorations, I have white fur, blonde fur, red fur, beige fur, gray brown fur, black fur, Fur, red brown fur, light brown fur, and brown fur. All nine different variations. So there are so many colors that you can put in your habitat and I think that that is amazing. Obviously these guys use the poles to swing around on, hang down on. They're very, very well. Oh, hello. They're going to disappear. Very, very well designed. I love their little faces. Can we pause it so you don't go anywhere? I love their little faces with the little white ring around the face. And of course, I don't think we need to talk about it anymore, but I'll just briefly mention it. The fur is absolutely amazing. The animations for these guys are really, really cool. I love when they get on top, just like this one's doing, and they kind of run along these uh, poles with their arms out. It's kind of like a Jack Sparrow-esque run, right? Where they just kind of uh, trot around the top of here. They kind of hang out on top as well and sit down. Um, but yeah, then we got some little babies down here as well. How cute are they? We will very briefly go in and take a look at their Zoopedia. I won't go over too much in detail, but I'll just open it up so you can see. We obviously have some information on the first tab. Then we have their space requirements here. They don't require too much space. You can see as we up it, it does obviously go up. They do need climbing requirements as well. If we go to the species data tab, groups of two to six, you can see everything else down below there. You are welcome to pause it if you wanna take a closer look. Uh, we don't need to talk about research status. And then we go to interspecies enrichment. So they actually get a bonus if they share their exhibit with the Asian small clawed otter, the Bornean orangutan, or the Siaming. Obviously this one makes a lot of sense. But yeah, they can share with any of these guys and get a little bonus for that. But don't they look good? I love them so much. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be that excited, but look at them run back and forth. Obviously very similar to the Siming that we already have in the game, um, but I just love how many color variations that we got. I think they're, they're great. They look amazing. Taking a little nap. Very good. Okay, let's move on and take a look at the next animal, the Fusa. So the Fusa has three different color variants, all of which are in here. We have light brown, dark brown, and just plain brown. This one, I believe, is the dark brown one because he's the dark one. But how good do these guys look? He's taking a little drink through the plaster. Let's go ahead and take a look at somebody else napping. I love, obviously, the fur. Look at their really long tail. Oh, we get to see little paw beans. Look at that. Can we zoom in a little bit more? Can I get a closer look at your little beans? Look at that. <laughs> little toe beans. How cute. Taking a little nap here in the sun. I love the gradient color from the darker to the lighter on the stomach. I mentioned that during the screenshot reveal. I think it is uh, very well done and it looks great. These guys have uh, similar requirements to, to the Clouded Leopard, I think it was. Let's open this up and take a look. Uh, here's their space requirements. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. They do have climbing requirements as well. Going to the species data tab. Uh, only groups of one to two. So I do have too many in here, but it's okay. It's sandbox and I've turned off all of their 
uh, ability to have opinions. So we are good. Uh, <laughs> you can see all the other information down here below. And then if we go to the interspecies enrichment tab, they don't have any. So Fusa's being a predator, um, not really likely to have an interspecies bonus. Um, so that totally makes sense. And we already have moonwalking Fusa's. They fit right in with all the other climbing animals. There you go. So yeah, there's our little Fusa. And I thought I had a baby in here somewhere. Did it already grow up? I feel... Man, did I take too long? Did it grow up? I thought I uh, disabled that, but maybe not. Oh, dang it. It already grew up. Okay, hold on. I'm going to wait for another one because they're adorable. Here we go. Here's our little babies. Aren't they cute? Look at their little eyes and their nose. Oh, little yawn. So cute. By far, I do feel like my favorite animal in the pack. I love these guys. Look at him. He's so cute. I think there was two of them. Because I think they have litters of one to two. Isn't that what we saw? I don't know where. Oh, aha. There he is. He's climbing all the way up here. Look at their eyes. How pretty their... Whoa, hello. How pretty their eyes are. Okay, camera. Can we not? That would be fantastic if you would cooperate. There we go. Look at how cool that looks. And the little hair in their ears. Their little claws. Oh, I just love them so much. They're absolutely adorable. All right. So there you go. There's our Fusa. Let's go ahead. I said that a little bit funny. There's our Fusa. <laughs> Let's move on to the Red River Hog. And we're going to start with the babies of the Red River Hog. Because look. Look at their little spots and their speckles. Little stripes and their fuzzy bellies. How adorable. I have a lot of them in here because they have babies very easily. But there you go. Look at their little ears twitching back and forth. Running around. How adorable is that? And then we obviously have mom and dad. There are three different variants for the Red River Hog. There are red coat, yellow coat, and orange coat. So just some very slight color differences, lighter and darker between adults. And then obviously like male here has these uh, big warts on the face here. And then the females don't. They're all facing away from the light right now. Of course, because I'm trying to show them off. Here we go rolling in the dirt this is a female because she does not have the little warts on her face look at her roll how cute and the little tufts of hair i love how their ears move individually and they kind of flick around just as they're walking as they're sitting oh she's gonna roll again <laughs> i love it uh and it just makes them feel more alive when they do little things like that you know and not so not so statuesque they uh they look very much like living creatures can one of the males turn around and so we can see? I mean, we can take a look at his face here. He's got the warts on his face like that. Aha, here's a male facing the sun. So there you go, little warts on his face just like that. So you can definitely tell just by looking at them who is a male and who is a female. They can use a lot of the same enrichment items as the Babarusa, but that was to be expected. Let's take a look at their Zoopedia page information there on the front page like always their natural habitat uh another small area requirement they don't need a whole lot of space and they don't need uh swimming or climbing so another smaller animal that can easily fit into the nooks and uh little unused spaces of your zoo their groups can be two to ten with only one male up to nine females more information for you. Uh, guests should not enter their habitat. If you want to pause this and take a look at it, you're welcome to. And last but not least, species enrichment. So you can include these guys in really cool and diverse tropical habitats. As you can see here, they have a lot of different animals that they get a species enrichment with. And uh, the Babarusa is not one of them, but I don't see why you couldn't put them together. Uh, if you wanted to, they just don't get an enrichment. But any of these guys, pygmy hippo, normal hippo, big hippo, I guess, regular hippo, whatever you want to call it, bongo, African buffalo, bonobo, ba um, uh, mandrill, Nile lichwi, uh, okapi, western lowland gorilla, and western chimpanzee. So these guys can share their habitat with a lot of different animals. So there you go. There's our red river hog. Are we going to eat this watermelon? 
Are you guys going to destroy it for us? Just a normal eating animation. Not too exciting. But there you go. They can use the watermelon. They can also forage in the little forage tray. Forage area. Whatever that's called. Eating away at their watermelon. Absolutely adorable. So yeah, there is the Red River Hog. Now, last but certainly not least for habitat animals, we have the Asian Water Monitor. And we do actually have some really fun variations for these ones. Right here walking, we can see that we have the uh, melanistic version. So all black, all solid colored. There, that is one of them. Then we also have, if I can click on him, we also have, hello, can I have the lizard, please? I don't want any of the trees. I want the lizard. Thank you. We have an albino version for this one. How cool is that? I think it looks great with the red orange eyes and obviously the, the light white colored scales everywhere. Very, very cool. So that one is the albino one. And then the regular ones have two different variants. We have gray black and green black. Let me see if I can find them for you. These ones I can't really tell just by looking at them. So if we go here, this one is the green black version. Very cool. I like their patterning all down their back. They're quite chunky. I thought they would be a little bit more slender, but they are quite chunky. And then this one right here should be our gray black. And if he gets out of the water, we might be able to actually see what he looks like. So there you go. Just a little bit darker, not too much different from the green black. They obviously really like the water being Asian water monitors. So they spend a lot of time swimming. And because I didn't want to alter this habitat, I actually made just a little tester over here just to make sure that they could deep dive and they absolutely can. So as you can see here, they swim quite easily through the water and they look great doing it. So if you have any enclosures with water that's deeper than four meters, I think is the cutoff. Uh, these guys can dive down deep into the water and swim around as they should. I would be very disappointed if they would not be able to. But look at how chunky their little bellies are. You see this? I was I was thinking they would be a little bit more slender. I'm not sure why, but they're a little they're a little chunky. And then of course we forgot to take a look at the baby. Um, there are a few in here. Can we bring you out of the water? Because I want to see you walk around on land. We have little babies here. Look just like their parents, just smaller. That's all. We can unhighlight you. Yeah. Just like their parents, just smaller. Look at their big eyes. Frontier has gotten so good at their detailing. Like, look at these each individual scales and the detail on the mouth and the head. Beautiful. Beautiful. It looks fantastic. And then, of course, let's take a look at their Zoopedia. Going over here. Oh, look at that picture. <laughs> a big yawn. Uh, Asian Water Monitor. Here is their natural habitat and their space requirements. Again, another really small requirement. So you can fit them into all the little spaces in your zoo. Usually like only one to two. So one male, one female. Um, guests cannot enter their habitat. And here's a little bit more about all of their stuff. If we go to the species enrichment uh, tab, you can see that they don't actually get along with anyone. So they don't get an enrichment bonus for anyone. Although... In knowing nothing about these guys, could they share an exhibit with the uh, Nile monitor? I feel like they could, right? I mean, I don't know. I don't know anything about Asian water monitors or Nile water monitors or Nile monitors. Um, but I don't see why they couldn't share a habitat or at least be next to each other, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so there is the Asian water monitor. Now... Last but certainly not least of all the new animals, we have our sloths. So what I did is I almost thought I had it paused for a second, but they moved that slowly. So what I did is in this one here, this is what the exhibit looks like when you just place it down and put a sloth in. So you can't remove any of this stuff. It auto populates with all of this climbing structure in there, which I think is 
pretty cool. They have a lot to climb on and a lot of places to go. I mean, look how, how slow they move. It's so cool. They move so slow. Frontier did a really good job mimicking that. We obviously have a little bit of sexual dimorphism with these guys. This one being a male with this patch coloration on the back. And then the females, that's a male again. Females don't. Females are going to have just the plain fur on their back. But the textures look amazing. Oh, look at this guy. is hanging by one hand. How cool is that? Yeah, they move super slow. And then if we go over here, I've added all of the different enrichment items that they could have. So they have this little heater, little swinging baskets. I have yet to see any of them actually go in any of these enrichment things because they move around so slow. So I keep checking back to see if they're going to uh, go inside any of those. And I haven't caught them yet. Uh, but let me open this up and I can actually just show you what the enrichment, uh, what tab is it? It's this one. So we have the browse holder, the food bowl, and the water dish. Climbing post A, so you can see it adds uh, more posts onto the uh, already implemented posts there. We have a basking light, a hanging chair, and the sloth nest. So those are all the different things that come inside of the sloth habitat, uh, or exhibit rather. I'm actually fairly happy about the fact that it doesn't have any default foliage in here. So there are no trees or plants that have to be a part of the sloth habitat. And so I actually really like that because when we got the butterflies, there are certain plants that are just put down automatically. And I like the ability to customize it any way you want it to be. So I'm kind of excited about that part. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to hide most of this. Like if I want to do an exhibit with a, a null barrier on all four sides, it is rather big. I almost wish that they would have just had uh, the default be like just one of these pillars with, with a climbing post across because this basically means that your sloth habitat has to be as big as this exhibit box. And I would have liked to be able to kind of half it, I guess, or make it look like it's halved. Now you probably still could, you would just put walls up, but the animals would glitch through the walls then. So it's up to you on how you want to play it. But the exhibit box is rather large and I just would have liked to been able to hide it a little bit more. But yeah, there is our little sloth friend. Moving on to scenery. So we have quite a lot to go over. These first ones here, foliage, trees, have to talk about them. Everything on the left of this tree is new, but not for the pack. So I'm pretty sure all these are new, right? I do this every time we get a pack. I start looking at things and think like, yeah, that's new. And then somebody tells me, no, we've had that forever and I just haven't found it. But I'm pretty sure all these different little vines and sticks are new. This plant has to be my favorite. So this is not specific to the tropical pack. This was just added with the update, I believe. And it's beautiful. I love it so much. I specifically love it in the small versions or sunk down into the ground to use as like a ground fern. But I think it's it's beautiful. And then, of course, we already had bigger versions of this tree. But this one right here is the sapling for that specific kind of tree that I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. So we did get another sapling, which is pretty cool. So another variant of that tree. And then all of this foliage is going to be what comes in the tropical pack. So we obviously have these really pretty uh, red rough flesia. That's the only time I'm gonna try to say it, flower. There you go. And then we have these ferns, these basket ferns that can uh, attach to the back of trees. If I unhighlight that, you can see they're kind of flat on their back and you can attach them to the side of tree trunks to give a little bit more uh, detail to your trees. So I think those are gorgeous. You could also sink these into the ground and maybe, um, maybe spin them around like uh, that, put it together and then sink it down into the ground and it could be more of a ground plant. So I think those are really cool. The details on these are really nice. All the fine little leaves and then the browner leaves down in the uh, base of the plant is really cool. 
We obviously have our pitcher plant. So one pitcher, two pitcher, and then the actual plant itself is very cool. And then there's this ground, uh, what is this called? This uh, vine, this ground vine, which is really cool. You might've been able to see it. I actually added it to some of the ground cover inside here, uh, just to give a little bit of height with these vines and mixed in with a whole bunch of other foliage. I think it looks really, really good. So yeah, there's all our new foliage. We of course get some uh, new, what are these? Guest facility, guest path. They're benches and trash cans is what they are. <laughs> benches, trash cans, and tables. My only complaint with these is that this is a rather large table, this picnic bench. We did not get any smaller version of that. As you can see here, this is the only three things we got. So I would have loved, because I love this kind of woven pattern on the benches and on the table, I would have loved to have had a circular version. Like obviously a lot of the other packs come with a smaller circular version table. Um, and we just didn't get that with the tropical pack. So I'm a little sad about that, uh, like this. If we would have gotten this, but with this kind of pattern and texture on it, I think that would have been amazing. Um, but it's not there, unfortunately. I do believe these are, yeah, recolorable. So you can pick and choose different colors for the woven part on the top. And then we have some really comfy looking chairs, uh, benches, excuse me, really comfy looking benches. These I think are more indoor ish, but I guess you could use them outdoors. They just scream like indoor lounge bench to me. They're very stylized. So you're only going to be able to use them in certain parts of your zoo that are also very stylized, but they're pretty nonetheless. And then of course we can't forget our trash can. This trash can matches all the stone pieces that we got in the scenery pack very, very well. Um, with nice little details on uh, on the base of it. So very cool. Of course, we have to talk about this path because this path is brand new. And so it's it's a like a stone path with dirt and grass in between. And I think it's great. Previously, the only, let me go to paths. The ones that we had with moss were like that one, or I think there was one more, right? Or this one, this one doesn't have moss, but it was another like stone. And then there's this stone as well. So it's a nice addition um, to maybe some more overgrown areas or obviously a tropical themed section of your zoo. Um, so it kind of just rounds out our stone path collection a little bit more. And I love it. So there is the path. And then moving on to our scenery pieces. Now I said this with the twilight pack. I never think I need more wood beam pieces until they're added and now I never want them to leave. I don't understand how I lived without them. They did a really good job including some unique pieces in this pack. So we got some triangle pieces, which are gonna be very, very useful for creating other shapes other than uh, squares and rectangles. We also got little tiny pieces like this or like really short pieces like this one. So I think that that is great just makes them that much more versatile we also got flat and skinny pieces slightly fatter and then square pieces in addition to the round ones in all different sizes and these ones are of course recolorable so if you wanted to change uh their color which i don't understand why it's not allowing me when i select my piece it's not allowing me to change the color which is weird but then when I go into construction and if I just select the tropical pack, oops, not the twilight pack, the tropical pack and go down here, uh, then I can't. So I don't quite understand if that was part of the update or what's going on. But for me, they are recolorable. So you can see that there, beautiful. Very excited about these pieces. And I'm really excited about these ones as well with the little detail, obviously recolorable as well. Moving on to, uh, we got a lot of stuff that belongs on walls. So we obviously have this brand new wall set and this comes with all of the same stuff that you would normally uh, uh, get with a wall set, like the arches and the uh, half walls and all that kind of stuff. But they all have this same texture, which is recolorable. I recolored a few down there so that you can see. Um, and I really like it. I really like how small each individual, excuse me, each individual brick is. I think it's, it is, uh, an awesome variation to some of the stone wall pieces we already have. 
Um, let me just grab a few. Like, obviously, this one is the normal brick. And you can see how much smaller these ones are comparative to here. You also really don't see, like, the grout in between or the concrete in between. So much tighter packed uh, on the wall. And I like how it looks like some of them are kind of sticking out further than others. This one's kind of sunken in. Gives it a little bit more depth than, like, this one is just more flat looking, um, I would say. Then we also have, uh, there is a normal brick piece. I guess I should search brick, right? Instead of stone, that would be um, pretty helpful. But we have that smaller, the painted one. It's painted, right? Oh, trying to find pieces with Savannah. There we go. We have the painted brick, which looks just like the other brick. Obviously, it's just recolorable, but you still get spaces in between the bricks, and they're very uh, a lot bigger than these ones are. So I'm happy about this wall piece. We also got uh, off the grid pieces as well, which is always nice. We got a lot. I did not put all of them down, but we got a lot of different drapery pieces, including these small, like a tie here, a loop, and then a knot as well, which I think is really useful. And for builders that are a lot more creative than me, they're going to be able to use this for a lot. Recolorable as well. We've got a few that go either draped over like this, or they would drape uh, if you turned this uh, horizontally, uh, or vertically rather than it could go around a corner. We have some straight pieces there. And then we have all this wall detailing as well, all recolorable. We have one that has gold on it. And then we have one that's more of just a wooden worn texture. We have all the different shapes of these ones. So like this one comes in this size and this size and this size as well. So I just kind of threw up a bunch of them there for you to see. We've got some smaller pieces and some small like detailing edge corner pieces as well. We have this little piece, which I was hoping in the pictures, the screenshot pictures that we saw, we saw this in the middle of each of these squares. And I am so happy that they introduced this piece here without these in the middle because now you can do whatever you want with them. So I think that is great. We have a little corner, um, what is this called? Like molding, I guess, corner detail piece, which is great. We have a little bit of detail pieces for like door handles. We have this trellis piece, which I'm really excited about because if you take this and you duplicate it, you can make some really cool wall trellis designs. So I love that piece. Love it a lot. So you can make whatever shape you want with that. Let me get out of here. We have a pillar that's not uh, symmetrical all the way up. It kind of tapers off to a smaller end and a fatter end at the bottom. We have this really cool lamp that matches the thatched roofing pieces that we're going to see. Obviously, the wall set is recolorable. I'm really happy with this coloration. I really like the kind of tan look. And then this was just me showing you that we get some of the other shaped pieces as well. Moving on to signs. We have some signs for every animal in the pack. Unfortunately, though, we only got one Fusa, one Red River Hog, and one Sloth. But we did get two water monitors and three given signs. So that's very cool. This style of sign is my favorite that Planet Zoo gives us. I'm not really a huge fan of some of the more stylized signs, but I really like this style of, uh, of 2D sign. I think they're, they're great and really useful for information and stuff like that. We also got a Fusa statue. Fusa uh, on its hind paws there, kind of swatting out with its front paws. So we got a little statue. And then we move on to the stone pieces. Now, this is a little creepy because I did kind of dismantle all of these. They come uh, in separate pieces. So obviously, you can see here's the legs, here's the torso. Then we've got arms. You can put whatever different head on this statue that you want. We do also have like the lizard version of the body as well. They look like I said, a little creepy, all dismembered like this, but you can make some pretty wacky combinations with like different heads and arms and yeah, all that. But you could also use these like this is just a really cool pillar. If you just wanted to duplicate this up and just make a building or an architectural pillar out of it. So that's pretty cool. I love when they do let us dismantle this kind of stuff because it just allows way more creativity. 
And then here are all the stone pieces with the moss. And you know what I didn't actually check? Let me go back because I did not actually check if these were recolorable or not. Let's go back to the tropical pack and go up to our stone. Yeah, they are. So you can see we can actually, uh, looks like we can change the color of the moss as well on here. So that's really cool. If you didn't want it to be moss, but you just wanted it to look a little bit dirty, just like that. Oh, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Or if you wanted it to be much brighter moss, you could do that. Uh, some white on there, maybe, I don't know, maybe bird poop. That's a lot of bird poop, but you could do it. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, we also got all these little detailing pieces. They're kind of hard to see on the ground. I apologize. Maybe what if I do this? What if I put down some sand? There we go. Now you can see them. So we got all these little detail pieces, which again, builders that are far more creative than myself are going to have a heyday with these, all the little pieces. We also got some corner pieces as well. These are not part of this pillar. They're separate. So you can place them wherever you want. And we got all different sizes, which is obviously always nice. We got some trim pieces. And then what I really am excited for is we got this uh, shape as we normally get for like some of the wood uh, pieces in the game, but in stone, this like little trimming, trimming is the word I was looking for, this little trim piece of stone. So I think that that is really cool. I think that's the first really small trim piece in a stone texture that we've gotten, right? Of course, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the first stone trim piece that looks like this, that's very plain and just skinny like that. We also got some bigger pieces. We got this one here, which will make a really good uh, like divider or base for a fence or something like that. And then moving on finally to our uh, roof pieces. And you wanna know the best part about all of these roof pieces? If we go into the build, oh, I'm on the wrong tab. There we go. If we go into the build catalog here and we go to select these, none of these are on the grid, not a single one. They are all off the grid pieces and you can put them wherever you want. You can rotate them, oops. You can rotate them in whatever direction you want. And I think that is fantastic. I don't know why Frontier decided specifically with this roof set to give us that freedom, but I'm excited about it. So you don't have to follow the grid for any of these. We also did get two different variations of it. This one is honestly my favorite. It's a little bit skinnier with the detailing on the bottom. And then these ones are a little bit fatter with just uh, some more square detailing on the bottom and a little bit of trim at the base. So we got those two different styles, but all with the same thatching on the top. And I didn't check either. I'm so bad. Let's go back into here. Are they? <gasps> they are. They are recolorable. How exciting is that? Um. Oh, you know what? Does it actually... I think it just recolors the... It just recolors the wood. Hmm, I don't know how I feel about that. That's cool. That's very cool, but I got excited too quickly, I think. Dang it, I wish we could recolor the thatch. That's kind of a bummer. What about, um, I doubt it's gonna be any different for the fatter pieces, but for these guys, no, it's, it's gonna be the same. Yeah, it's gonna be the exact same. We can only recolor the wood. Dang it, I wanted to be able to recover recolor excuse me everything oh well they're pretty nonetheless we also got all these pitched roof pieces little detailing here and then we got these really interesting looking roofs uh i don't really know if i'm ever going to touch these at all but let's turn this one around so that we can see it in the sun um they're really cool nonetheless i just don't know personally if i'm ever going to be building with these but all of this detail on the front of it is actually very very cool um and it's very easy to make really sloped you know buildings like that it totally goes with the southeastern uh asian southeast asian uh architecture design that the pack was going for so very cool yeah that is uh that's basically everything um i didn't put down each 
individual thing, just most of the stuff. Oh, I didn't even talk about the scenery pieces or these little detail pieces. I'm so bad. Anyway, we got uh, some pots here. We got the little pot with the incense and you can see it's got a little bit of a VFX coming off of it, which is pretty cool. Then we have, uh, I put these on the wall as well, little detailing pieces. We got a drum. These were on the wall too. I love these. These are pretty cool. Little uh, plank pieces with the detail of the wiring holding them together would be really cool for like rickety rope bridges. So that is awesome. And then we also got these, which actually match if we go into habitat and we go to enrichment item, they match uh, this piece as well. So you could probably, if you paste, uh, paste, if you place this down and then you take something like this, and uh, match it up, you can make an entire wall and then the animals will interact with it and you can maybe blend it in so it doesn't necessarily look like it's its own piece, if that makes sense. Let me just do this very quickly. But if you see what I mean, you can make it part of, an, of a bigger object and then your animal will interact with it and it doesn't have to just be this sitting on its own piece. You can do some at the bottom as well like that. And this is obviously just really quick and dirty getting it down so that you guys can see. But yeah, do something like this. And now your animal will come up and rub against this and you've kind of camouflaged the um, enrichment item. So I thought that that was pretty cool that they included those. Um, you could also do really cool like back facade pieces uh, for different displays and stuff. We got this cool little rickety ladder, which I think is pretty awesome. And then of course we've got a roof detailing, little uh, spire thing, and then uh, something for an umbrella, like the umbrella without the actual pole in the middle. So yeah, so there you go. Now I've covered all of the pieces. I almost forgot about my little scenery piece here uh, in the middle, but that is uh, everything coming in the tropical pack. The tropical pack of course actually officially releases tomorrow on April 4th. So if you're watching this uh, before it goes live, thank you so much for being here. And remember to leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you're interested in any further Planet Zoo content. You can follow all of my other social media pages down in the description below. We just passed, I think, 6,000 followers on Instagram and 4,000 followers on TikTok. So I appreciate you guys. That is phenomenal. And uh, you can also find our Discord and link to my Etsy shop if you want to support the channel just a little bit more. I appreciate you and I will talk at you guys in the next video. Bye!